Uh, hi, my name is Matej, I work at Parity. Uh, I'm here to talk about universal offline signatures and what it is. And what it is, is this. Uh, so uh, a bit of an anecdote. Uh, a long while back in like, I think late 90s, uh, uh, a guy named Douglas Crockford was trying to convince some people to use the thing he called JSON which is a substitute JavaScript for transmitting data. And he was walking from company to company and was like, hey, can you like use this? And so people were like, no, well, we are committed to XML because you spend money on XML and this, this, is, this thing is not a standard. And I was like, yeah, no, it's totally a standard. It's like part of JavaScript. It's like, no, no, it's not a standard. It doesn't have a standard body. Um, so he, he bought a JSON.org domain, put the specs there and called it a standard and somehow people believed him. Um, so this is kind of my attempt at doing that. I don't have a domain yet. I should probably buy one. Uh, but like March this year, I basically wrote this, this markdown document. Uh, the link will be at the end as well, so we don't have to copy it now. Um, and yeah, there's a reason why it exists. Uh, what all begins is we have an app called Party Signer. Is, who is not familiar with Party Signer? Do I need to explain? OK, there's one. Oh, there's a couple. OK. So we have, we have this app. Uh, the idea is basically. Um, instead of using a hardware wallet, you can have an app on the phone uh, which acts as a, a hardware wallet. Ideally, um, in like a perfect scenario, you have like a dedicated phone for this and that you keep offline or keep it in offline mode. But the idea is that you go to like some wallet on your computer, like my crypto or something, um, you make your transactions on the computer and then the moment you actually get to sign this transaction, um, my crypto doesn't actually have access to your private key, the private keys in your, in your uh, computer. Uh, and as you would use a hardware wallet over a USB cable, uh, instead of USB cable, you scan the transaction as a QR code to your phone. You sign it there, you verify that actually, you know, the if or whatever else you're sending uh, matches up and you, the address you're sending to matches up. Um, and then you sign the transaction, you get the signature on the screen on the, on the phone, you sign it back to the computer and then transaction goes out to the to ether and works. So it's like an alternative to hardware wallets. So that's a party designer pitch in like 30 seconds. Um, but then we also have the other thing uh, which we do at party which is a substrate. So substrate is our new framework for building blockchains. Polkadot is built on substrate. Uh, our Ethereum 2.0 client is built on substrate. So um, we do have a need for, you know, hardware wallets and so on like for, in order to like, let's say, uh, cultivate growth for substrate, we also want to have some some form of hardware wallet available to people when people don't notice. Um, so, you know, we have the party designer. Hey, how about like we extend the party designer to use uh, to, to be able to use substrate? Um, so, party designer is a feels a niche role. It's it's designed to just you know sign transactions for Ethereum. Um, it's designed out of necessity work. So. Um, decisions that were made there were like, okay, well, it just needs to work for things in the Ethereum. There isn't really much of like a big scope, so we can make some cuts in, in terms of like developer time. Um, it's a custom, not extensible uh, protocol, the, 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 the thing that you, you know, sign on the care codes or send over the care codes. Um, and it's basically, yeah, it's basically JSON wrapping some hexadecimal encoded data. Uh, and that's how it works. Uh, and for Substrate, uh, there's a couple things. So Substrate is using a different cryptography from, from Ethereum. You're using the, the curve 25519 um, because reasons, it's cool. I know, I don't, I am, I'm not a cryptographer, but people tell me it's cool. Um, at the time we had undefined mnemonic system, so we didn't have like a proper schema for, um, for how to like, you know, store, uh, or store your private keys on paper in a way you can recover them easily. Um, and we also had like a bit different design principle here. So uh, we want one signature scheme to be available to or usable on all substrate chains. So every time, if someone builds a new chain on substrate, we don't you know they don't necessarily have to like go to every single like hardware wallet manufacturer uh, and and ask them to like hey can you add like support for our chain because you know technically their like signature scheme is the same. Uh, and we also have to, like want to have some coherent user experience on that. Um, Oh yeah, and asterisk to undefined. We settled on uh, BAP32 for current compatible uh, schema now. So, um, everything substrate is basically the same kind of phrases you are used to with like Bitcoin and Ethereum. So yeah, so 
we had the challenge, okay, let's let's make it work for our substrate and try to accept it. And also like while we're like reworking the signer to, to work with substrate, maybe we can also like do some changes um, to the way it handles Ethereum and make it better. Um, so let's talk about security and convenience. Um, so ph philosophically, the uh, complete lack of security is the ultimate convenience, right? If, if there's no security at all, I can go, you know, do the thing with my thing and it's awesome, except the problem is like everyone else can do the thing with my thing and if that thing is my money, then I probably don't want that. But it's super convenient. Uh, if there is no access, so like no one can access the money, then that's ultimate security, which is useless by default because if no one can access the money, then, you know, no one can access the money. Um, and that brings us to like the main point is that security is ultimately intention of convenience. So the more security you want, the more inconvenient it's going to be to use the thing. Uh, but you know, on the flip, on the flip side, you know, if you uh, if you want convenience, then well, maybe you'll have to make some compromises on security. And if you're like, okay, um, QR codes are actually reasonably good secure uh, because uh, uh, in terms of like sending your your transactions over to the to the like online computer, um, there isn't much that can go wrong. Uh, you know, something like a USB cable uh, being universal, like, you know, um, if you like Google, like, but USB, uh, there's a lot of things you can do with a USB, USB cable that is not necessarily maybe not what you want. Um, and QR codes are actually kind of primitive, which is good, but they also maybe not super convenient. Um, but yeah, so the definition of what is secure depends on how valuable are, are your secrets and how much convenience you're willing to sacrifice to, to get it. Uh, so when we say secure, we roughly mean this, which is like, you know, given current, I don't know, you can read it, given current uh, and foreseeable technical, technological progress and the economic incentive in place, all potential attack against this are either techno technologically unreasonable in time or extremely economically determined, although the attacker does pointless. Well, that's kind of that's a mouthful, and so we just say secure, but there's nothing that's really secure 100%, unless it's completely useless. Um, but there is, so the security and convenience are kind of intention, but there are still ways to increase convenience without you know, sacrificing security. Uh, one way is performance. So if you have two apps, one is, they, they both have the same features, they're both equally secure, um, but one is just like snappy and fast and cool and you know, designed in California, and the other is uh, kind of slow and maybe crashes, and the one that's fast and snappy is more convenient. Um, Another thing, if, if the thing I'm using is standardized and I can use it with multiple different things because that's what standards are for, then again, this is more convenient because, hey, I'm not um, locked necessarily to the same vendor. I can maybe swap the vendor to use something else that uses the same standard, so that's cool. And also, if the thing is extensible, so maybe it's future-proof, I'm, I'm sure that the thing I'm using is actually gonna, gonna work in the future, or maybe if there's a new feature comes in the future, or in case of substrate, if there's a new chain comes out in the future, I, you know, I don't have to worry about stuff. So in terms of performance, well, this is a protocol standard, so it's, there is no code I can optimize because there is no code, it's just a document. Um, but looking at uh, QR code, this is a nice table from uh, Wikipedia. Uh, there's a couple modes uh, that you can encode a QR code in. Uh, there's numeric, alphanumeric, binary, and kanji. Well, I'm not gonna kind of talk about kanji for obvious reasons. Um, most people send basically data over in binary form mode, uh, mostly because the alphanumeric is pretty useless. It doesn't have lowercase letters, it doesn't have a lot of things. So even if you're sending something like a URL, if you're scanning a QR code over URL, you are almost always scanning a binary QR code. And this binary QR code is encoded in the ESO 88591, which is Latin one, which is kind of crazy in 2019 that people don't use it to fade. Uh, but that's where they live. So here are two QR codes. Uh, they are encoded, they're both encoded in the binary mode. And for, first question, which one do you think is easier to scan for your phone? Or like it's going to be faster to scan? The right one, right? Because like it's bigger, like the blocks are bigger, it's easier to scan. Um, the question number two, which one of those QR codes contains more information? It's, it is a tree. almost correct. It's actually the one on the right has more information. 
And I'm using the word information, I'm not using the word data. I'm very precise in my wording here. Uh, because information and the data are different things. So the one on the left is JSON text, text and hexadecimal encoded transaction. And the one on the right is US, is single byte prefixes, so it's actually binary. And they are roughly the same, the only difference is the one on the right also contains a prefix for protocol, so there's extra bit of data, oh, information uh, on, the, on the one on the right. Uh, so that's basically, that's the main, main thing of the US is basically write a spec that actually makes sense and it's actually um, exploits the QR code to the, like, fullest, you know, to the fullest performance you can have. And so that if you're using like an old phone that doesn't necessarily have a good camera, um, you can still like sign in transactions very quickly. Um, so some things that came up when I was like writing this uh, it was like, well, if you're sending like transactions over in a binary format, like why don't you just like use some standard because people are used to like sending like JSON objects, which basically Skype, uh, here's the nonce, this is the, you know, this, this is the address from, this is the address to. Uh, and the thing is like, well, we actually have standards for that uh, because blockchains turns out are made of blocks which are binary, uh, which contain transactions in binary, conci you know, concise formats. Um, and there are formats for those transactions that are uh, unsigned, so lacking transactions. So um, there is an LLP format for a transaction in Ethereum that lacks a transaction that actually is being hashed and then signed. So we can just send those over the, over the QR code. Uh, and same in Substrate, there is the scale encoding, which is roughly equivalent here. Uh, so there's a way to pack the transaction into something compact. Uh, and, and we hash that and sign it. Uh, so compared to that, if you, if you put it in a hexadecimal text, that's 100% over, over, overhead, because like your every byte becomes two bytes, like you know, the, the byte AA becomes letter A and letter A, which is two bytes. Uh, if you are a bit smarter and, uh, smarter and use like something like base64, um, then you have you know, one third overhead, which is a bit better, but you still have overhead. And, Basically, using anything other than binary is kind of pointless because, you know, this is not human readable anyway, right? And you could use the the full like JSON object descriptions, but then like your your QR code actually would be even even like more dense than the one on the left, and even harder to scan. So that's roughly what the whole thing is about: is basically making a description of how a how to do it on substrate and also how to. Um, Enable the the Ethereum QR code exchange, make it faster, easier, better, and so. Um, so you, yeah, I wrote this back in March. Uh, got a lot of good feedback. Uh, cheers from Mr. Ligi from Wallet. Uh, had long long discussions there. Good stuff. Um, so the, the party sign already has code for uh, subsidy support and for Ethereum support with the US. So that's going to land on the app stores. Um, there is there is an actual like dedicated hardware wallet. Uh, from the company called Engrave that's also coming soon, that is supporting the US for, at least for Substrate. They got a grant from Web3 Foundation to, to do that. So that's pretty cool stuff. Look, look them up, it's cool, it looks nice. Um, Metamask has, there is like this huge PR 6267 that's open, that's adding uh, support for party signer and a bunch of other um, way, ways to sign your transactions with QR codes. Uh, and once that is finally merged, I will then pros proceed to add uh, US support to MetaMask. The, the guys are pretty open to that. So hopefully we'll be able to use US on, on MetaMask. Uh, and my crypto, uh, my crypto handles party signer. That's like one of the bigger things uh, that, you know, um, as far as party signer is concerned, uh, more of biggest conveniences that you can, I can just go to my crypto.com is my party signer today. So um, once we have, are sure that everything is fine. I will probably just make a PR there and um, we'll have US in the market as well, hopefully. So that's about it, uh, extensible future. Um, so we are using like, as not, at this point, uh, there is a single byte extension. Um, so it's pretty easy to add new protocols. Um, would be nice to add Bitcoin. I don't use Bitcoin, therefore I didn't write Bitcoin specs, but we're going to be pretty easy to extend. Uh, also, funny thing, um, so when I started writing this, I used like just uh, 
byte numbers for uh, in order for different networks. So like one was substrate, two was Ethereum. And I was like talking to actually to people from Engrave, and they were like, "Yeah, well, if you propose this to Bitcoin, they they're not going to want to be number three. They want to. It doesn't matter what number it is. They're like, oh, Bitcoin should be number one." Um, so the protocol now is using uh, ASCII capital letters. So there's a capital letter E in ASCII is Ethereum, capital letter S in ASCII is Substrate, and capital letter B will be up for Bitcoin. Um, so yeah, first part will be cool because then we are not vendor locked. Uh, working group with me nice because right now I'm the standard body. I don't want to be the standard body or not the whole standard body. So if you want to do something, get in touch. Uh, yeah, there's the URL, there's a QR code for the URL, so you can do that. Uh, there's my name, mail, there's, I'm on Twitter, so you can bother me there. Uh, are there questions? Also then this. Sure. Did they do what? They're scary. Yeah. They frighten you because you see the random QR code in the street and you have no clue. You don't want to target your device on what do you want, what don't you know. And uh, I would suggest adding some particular color code or, I don't know, something read readable description of what this QR code is for. Just decide. Okay. So, so, so the old. The, the, the question, which is not really a question, it was more of a statement. <laughs> yeah, uh, or suggestion. Uh, this is about uh, adding, um, so the, the, the fact that QR codes are scary and if you're scanning something on the street, then, then you don't necessarily know what's going to happen. Uh, and, and you might add something to the QR codes, like make it sure what, what it is. So, so this, this is clearly intended to be very specific use case where we actually um, you, you maybe don't know, or you you might not be sure that the, the QR code you're scanning is like the transaction you made, but um, that's why we actually decode oh, we, we decode the transaction in the in the signer um, because you can extract from the from the data of the transaction. You can actually extract you know the nonce and amounts and all the stuff. You can actually verify that the, the thing you're signing is actually correct. Um, and the fact that it, it is binary, so uh, like the, the QR code, if you if you were to like scan the one on the uh, on the right with your like iPhone camera up, whatever, you don't, you don't get anything because there is no text that iOS recognizes. I guess Android will be probably the same. Um, so in that way, it's pretty harmless. And QR code as a format or as a protocol. Uh, because like there is no, so compared to like other protocols, let's say, so other, other like substrates you want, you want to like transmit data over, say like Bluetooth, like you could use Bluetooth to like tra transfer data, but Bluetooth also can do things like, you know, it can pretend to be a device and can pretend to be a keyboard and maybe we'll start typing on your computer. Like QR code cannot pretend to be a device, and, you know, so it's actually, in that respect, it's actually safer. And hopefully you don't scan random QR codes with party signer on like the street, because that sounds weird. Cool. And other questions? To verify transaction, do you need the metadata? To to, to verify transaction, you need metadata. Uh, like the the blockchain metadata. Oh, for substrate. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, hopefully not. So so we, so the question is, do you need metadata for for substrate? So, for substrate chain. Uh, we can recognize which chain the transaction is for. In Ethereum, it's using the, the chain ID. In Substrate, it's now going to use the, um, the the block hash for the Genesis block. So we can tell for which block the, um, the transaction belongs to. Um, and we can we can get the metadata this way. Uh, you need to have the metadata for like your chain on the device. So for starters, uh, the first signer is going to support Kusama, which we know metadata for. And for future networks, um, yeah, we basically need like another way to uh, add a new networks to the device without having to install new firmware, basically. Um, so there will be probably another QR code for that, uh, where you have to like trust this QR code. Particularly, it's like if I'm adding a new chain to like handle new, uh, you know, a new blockchain on my device, then then I need to 
trust that the metadata is correct because otherwise I won't be able to verify necessarily what I'm saying. Cool. Anything else? Just one in back. I understand that this is a, uh, a mobile phone app, correct? The, oh, the, the signing up. The signing up is a mobile app, yes. Uh, but this is the, 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 this thing is a spec for this kind of uh, app or for a the, the dedicated device as well. Yeah, have you actually looked into um, dedicated devices and getting? So, so we haven't because we are not a hardware manufacturer. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah, there, there's uh, so like Engrave. So these guys here. Uh, so this is a startup that's making a dedicated hardware wallet that is using QR codes for signing transactions. Okay. They, they've been planning that before, and that got actually like pretty well like aligned the goals with, with the US. So so there is going to be a, a full dedicated actual hardware wallet that you know that has like all the um, protection against even like physical attacks where you know maybe you want to like tinker with the get read some data from the device. Um, they have all like standard. Standard hardware wallet protections, but they are also using QR codes and not, not USB cable tools for signing. Okay, great. Cool. Any other questions? That's it. Yeah. That's it. Thank you.